Today, we're replacing an axle spindle on a single axle Ranger Trail boat trailer. This is the After Work Garage. So a little while back, I was coming back from a fishing trip and I was trailing my boat back on the highway and I ended up hitting an aluminum ladder that had fallen off of someone's vehicle and was just left in the middle of the road. And this ended up uh, sending my truck into a fish tail and then uh, actually the truck and trailer ended up doing a 180 degree spin off of the road. And I got super lucky that I didn't hit any other cars uh, and I didn't roll the truck or lose the boat off of the trailer. Um, but what this did was put a lot of lateral load on the wheels of the trailer. And when I got out and looked afterwards, uh, the left side wheel was actually bent in uh, a little bit and it was leaking a little bit of the bearing oil that's in there. Now it wasn't leaking so bad and I, I actually jacked it up and shook the wheel around and it was solid on there. Um, so I figured I could make it home. So I was fortunate enough I was able to uh, drive the trailer back home, you know, slowly checking it and making sure that it wasn't heating up or losing too much fluid. Uh, so I got it home and let's go see what we got. So here's the problem. The fender should actually be vertical. Now the boat's leaning because I have it up on a jack stand right now. Um, but the wheel is not in line with the fender and that's actually because the wheel is bent downward. The force of the wheel hitting the, uh, I believe it was the grass, and you can see over here there's actually grass stuck in the wheel in between the bead of the tire and the wheel, suggesting it was really uh, quite an impact there. On the back side, the bearing seal uh, seems to be leaking, and I noticed this while I was on the road, but it didn't seem to be leaking badly enough to need to repair it on my way back. So let's pull the wheel off real quick and uh, see what we got. So feeling a little crunchy. It should be kind of a little stiff, but not crunchy like that so that bearings not happy in there let's get a better look at where it's been leaking so it was leaking right up against here I don't know if you can hear that but you can tell there's resistance sometimes and then other times not that's not good fortunately it looks like there is a spindle that goes all the way through here it has a nut goes all the way through I'm hoping that's what's bent and it's not this arm here which would necessitate probably replacing the whole axle. So let's pull this bearing out and see what we got. Okay, so there doesn't seem to be any massive destruction in there, but as you can tell by when I pulled that cap off, there wasn't too much fluid left. I'm actually pretty happy to see there was fluid left uh, to begin with. Let's get in there and look and see what we got. This isn't really a video on replacing tapered roller bearings, but if that's what you're trying to do, there's tons of good information out there on it. And as far as these particular ones are concerned, they're pretty standard. Uh, though I'll try to do a video on tapered roller bearings later and include some tips on removing the inner bearing seal without a seal puller and an easy way to get the bearing races out of the hub, which I actually include in this video a little later as well. All right, this assembly comes off. Washer, bearing, seal and other bearing is in there. As you can see all the way through the other side of it. So I'm thinking this is actually what's bent here, the spindle. So if you can see there, it's bent. Maybe some contrast from the back. Yeah, that spindle's absolutely bent. So trailers vary on how these spindles are put in, and to be honest, I'm not an expert. Some of them are welded in, some of them are pressed in. Looks like there's a nut on the back of this one. Uh, right here, it's a castellated nut. I'm wondering if that just pushes out once I get that nut out, but let's take a look. It's held in by a cotter pin there.
this guy is not working with me. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. So how am I supposed to do this? So you can't... What? I hope this is uh, really loose. What do we think? Actually work. Give this a shot. Hey, it broke it free. All it took was a floor jack and a big pipe wrench. Okay, well, it looks like maybe there's a break around here. I'm guessing we just push this out, but I don't know. But I guess it can't hurt to try. Otherwise, I'm buying a new axle. Okay, so yes, good practice to put a thing back on before you start beating on it. I'll do that. I don't know, your guess is as good as mine. What do we think? We think it beats out right here? And if it does, do you think I'm gonna be able to get it out? I do not know. I looked up the replacement spindle and it just has a tapered end on it that appears to slide into a tapered bore. So I figured I'd just keep going with some penetrating oil and some heat and see where that got us. So nicely powder coated and painted there, I feel bad heating it. But I think it's going to be the only way we're going to get this guy out. That was easy. I'll take it. So it took a lot of heating and using the big pipe wrench again to get the nut off of this end, which I probably should never put back on there uh, since we don't need to save these threads. But you can see that this is a spindle. This is sort of a tapered part right here where it presses into this axle tube here. And if we go back, take a look. You can clearly see now that it is not straight. It's pretty hot still, but has a definite wobble to it. So that's the problem. Looks like it bent right around here. And by the looks of these grooves up here, either the edge of the bearing or something, maybe the little bit of the metal in the bearing seal was digging into it on the ride back. 
Just got my new part in here. Uh, this is gonna be the replacement spindle for the old one, which is right here, and obviously bent. Um, they look pretty much identical with the exception of the fact that the new one has a Zerk fitting on the axle nut side. Now, this is the side that the wheel hub's gonna sit on and, uh, and the cap here where you'd put grease, or in this case, oil is on this side. And the axle tube that we're gonna stick this in the trailer is on this side. Uh, now, since this fitting, it looks like it, this is made so that grease can go into this fitting and it comes out this little hole here, um, which this does not have. This has that similar grease collar, it looks like, but there's no hole and no Zerk fitting, obviously. The other difference is that the axle nut here is uh, the same size as the axle nut on the other side, so it's slightly larger, whereas the axle nut here and the threading is smaller than the threading on that side. So I'm hoping that's not going to be a problem, but let's get it in there and we'll test fit it with the hub and that little cap and see if we're going to have any clearance issues there. So let's head out to the trailer. When I got the axle tube cleaned up, I was a little concerned because there were these grooves or score marks in there and a little confused as to where they came from because it doesn't appear that this old spindle uh, is the source of them from spinning around in there or anything because there's not any kind of uh, witness marks on the tapered end of that. But whatever the purpose of these are, or if they were just incidental uh, part of manufacture, they didn't seem to interfere with installation of the new spindle. So installation is pretty straightforward. Uh, I just slipped the tapered end of the new spindle into the axle tube, and I wasn't sure if there was supposed to be any sort of uh, anti-seize or lubricant or anything on there. Uh, when I took the old one off, there seemed to be some sort of residue of some old lubricant, whether that was original from assembly or uh, a result of the old bearing leaking. Um, I did put a little bit of marine grease on there just because I figured it couldn't hurt. Um, and then just tightened down the axle nut on the back and we have ourselves a new spindle. With the new spindle in place, the next thing we have to do is take a look at the wheel hub and inspect it for any damage and then replace the outer bearing races, which sit inside the hub. So I cleaned up the hub a little bit here, just with some brake clean. So you can see that the bearing race surfaces aren't exactly pristine, they're not all pitted or anything, but I think just the force on them definitely caused some damage. You can see a ring in that one. There's a, I don't know if you can see that little ring on the inside there. It's like a groove that's been almost hammered into it. And then on the inside, uh, this bearing race looks kind of odd. It looks like there's, um, almost looks roughed up. If you're just repacking or replacing bearings, there's not necessarily a need to replace the bearing cups, the outer bearing races, uh, unless they're damaged. But in this case, because of the damage, I went ahead and replaced them. So to pull them out, you can push them out with a punch, uh, and there are special bearing race removal press tools, but I don't have them. Uh, so I went ahead and used the technique where you weld a bead along the inside of the bearing race and then allow that bead to cool, and it contracts the race just enough so that you can slip it out or it drops out pretty easily. Installing the new bearing races is just a matter of pressing them into the hub. Now, here I'm using the old bearing race to press the new one down into where it sits. And I'm doing this so that I don't have to pound on or near the new race anywhere uh, and risk damaging it. Also, the cardinal rule of installing these things is not to let it get in there crooked as you're pushing it in, because it will get stuck. Now, key to this is getting it started as evenly as possible. And I'm just using a wooden block to tap it gently down and make sure it gets started in there evenly. And then I'm going to use a socket with a diameter that uh, is large enough so that it's only pressing on the rim of the bearing race and still small enough to fit inside the hub. This is kind of a standard way to push these in. 
Uh, but if it does start to get a little cockeyed in there, a few judicious taps on the higher side will usually help even things out. But just go slowly and uh, make sure you're careful so it doesn't get in there too crooked. If that happens, you're gonna have a really hard time getting it either seated in there properly or back out so that you can try installing it again. Now, I've actually done this in the past and gotten it stuck and ended up having to buy a new bearing race because I was worried that I damaged the one that I was installing. So just be careful and go slow and make sure that it's going in there evenly. After repeating the process with the race on the other side, it was time to install the inner bearing and the inner bearing seal. Now is the time when you'd normally pack a new bearing with grease before installing it to make sure grease gets all around the rollers and in the bearing uh, so that it's not starting up dry until the grease gets up to temperature and can flow easily. Um, but since this hub is oil bathed, I wasn't quite sure what to do. So I opted to uh, drench the new bearing in oil and sort of squeeze it in there to try to get it all around the rollers and in the bearing cage. I'm not sure if this is necessary, but it sounded like a good idea. Installation of the inner bearing seal. This is the seal that rides up on the spindle and prevents the oil or grease in your hub from coming out as the wheel's turning. Uh, is a similar story to installation of the bearing races where you want to get it started as evenly as possible and prevent it from going in crooked. Um, but I usually find this to be less challenging, partly because I, it's, uh, I think it's a looser fit and because the seal seems to have some more flex to it. But for this reason, you also have to be careful not to bend or damage the seal. Uh, that could cause leaks later down the road. The other thing you want to be really careful about is uh, putting the inner bearing in before you put the seal in. Because once you put that seal in, uh, you can't get the bearing in there. And it's, I'm not going to say impossible, but near impossible to get a seal out um, without wrecking it or damaging it once it's pressed in there to put the bearing in. So I screwed up here and I forgot to change the camera angle so y'all could see but installation of the hub assembly back onto the spindle is pretty straightforward as well. You just slide the hub on, seal side first, followed by the outer bearing, and then finally the axle nut. Now if you remember, the new spindle came with a larger diameter axle nut, as well as a zerk fitting, and I was worried that those might present a problem with clearance, uh, given the oil cap that screws on to this um, hub assembly, just to, to cover it up and keep the oil in. While the nut itself didn't present a problem with clearance, I did have to remove the Zerk fitting, which is just a matter of uh, taking some pliers and twisting it out, as well as um, really working to get the cotter pin that goes into the axle nut bent in a way that it wasn't rubbing and contacting that uh, plastic grease cap, or in this case, oil cap either. As you can see now, the trailer wheel is in line with the fender. And I've actually trailered this boat about two hours since putting the new spindle on, so... I'd say it worked. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time on the After Work Garage.